quite a while now. Oh, this is this is so good. In fact, I, I hope we can even just touch ever so briefly, if you want to, even on on how the Trinity might fit in, because I'm kind of a, a build a, a bridge builder, you know, and I like to see how different cultures can maybe come closer together and maybe see a common ground, maybe a common reality, and maybe make some progress together. Mm. And so I was even thinking that it's kind of cool that in your in your tradition, you'll recognize a kind of diversity of aspects within the mm -hmm. fundamental reality. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I mean, there are different ways of understanding the idea that maybe God could have a kind of diversity of personas. And one kind of way of thinking about it that, I don't know, I was just, I just kind of want to float this and see what you guys think. Um, it, it is in terms of kind of a metaphor where you think about God as a uh, source or fundamental reality that could be like God the Father or something but but you don't have to use that language you know but that could be sort of like one way of thinking of God like as source or as fundamental and then, then you could think of God through the lens of different aspects of God like so maybe like God as um, merciful you know Allah mm -hmm. as merciful and that could be like you could think of that as another sort of expression of God. And then you could have like another one, which is like maybe some kind of um, sort of present or God as spirit or, or some kind of present reality. There's different ways this could go. And this could be maybe a way of sort of thinking of a sort of even triune conception of God within your own tradition that would be consistent with your own tradition. Um, and then maybe it could even be consistent with the Christian tradition as well, a certain version of the Christian tradition, where the, where it looked like the, these were worlds apart and we had to like fight over this. There's actually a way of analyzing these things to get to their essences, where may, maybe there's a way of, of even getting some unity here. So that, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I just thought I'd share this. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think it, it, it depends on how we um, define the persons, right? Because, um, and this is something that uh, I try to point out to, to, to Muslims and, and Christians as well, that at least, and I have to be fair, there is complexity, uh, no pun intended, in the Islamic tradition, there are uh, diverse views, but the broad mainstream of, of Sunni orthodoxy is um, not to accept divine simplicity, right? So we, we accept these real attributes. So the problem isn't necessarily um, that, the trinity leads to god not being utterly simple that's mm -hmm. not what the issue is the the issue is for example when we say um that the father is god and the son is god and the holy spirit is god and there's this semantical point of what does it mean what does is god mean does it mean that they're actually identical to god uh and if so if if the father is identical to god and the son is identical to god well, then it would follow by necessity that they're identical to each other, which is yep. modalism, which is problematic. So you want to avoid that. So it's going to be something like uh, an is of predication in which uh, divinity is being um, ascribed to uh, the subject or the person, in this case, the, the, the father, son and spirit. The, the only issue I see is that I don't know exactly how that would map on to the Islamic conception of God with multiple attributes because we wouldn't we wouldn't say like uh, for example oh, um, mercy is God in, in in that sense you know what I mean we would just say um, God is merciful yeah. and that's a, that's a, that's a predicate or like a property that's being ascribed to the subject but I don't know if it it matches on the same way with a person because the way that i see as a person a person seems to be the subject in which the properties are then ascribed to in other words yeah um and in our view yeah in, other, in our view it seems like and we don't use the term person but if we did it would be one person with multiple attributes predicated of that person whereas with the trinity it seems like there are three persons with multiple attributes each ascribed to them um so i i guess we would have to dig down into how exactly we're going to define and understand person and see is, is there an analogy to be made between the persons and the attributes yeah um, that, that's and, it yeah and i was actually thinking of, of even a third model um mm. 
which is one that some Christian philosophers have been floating in, in the literature where you have this sort of, now in my language, a kind of original self or subject of consciousness that um, shows up as different things. So it's mm -hmm. self as source, self as um, merciful, self as mm -hmm. spirit. And, you know, it, there's a question about whether, okay, is this modalism? And, and some yeah. theologians I've asked have said that, well, it's actually not technically because it has to do with whether the, it has to do with certain technical distinctions that now I'm looking at the history books and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what, what's within the range of the tradition? Yeah, I think Rob well, Coons likes that type of model. He, he's got yeah. a model like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Ray has something like this. I also have a friend who's published something similar to this uh, that early yeah, I think me. what they try to say is that um, the heresy of modalism seemed to be more involved with that the persons are uh, basically non-essential or contingent because they would then be based on creation and God's um, sort of action and creation. But on this other conception, it's it's not it's not that it's meant to say that this is basically essential or necessary to God in some way even apart from creation, he has these um, sort of three aspects, I guess you yes, could say. Yes. So that's that's what they try to say. And this, I, I, I'm not a Christian, so I don't know. And I'm definitely not an expert in terms yeah. of um, uh, whether or not this is orthodox or not. That's not my job. But um, yeah, I, I, I am aware of this model and, and that's something to take a look at. Um, the and, only and I want to say I'm, I'm not an expert, you know, on this either. Yeah. It's just it is interesting because they're in the Latin school, there mm -hmm. is more of a emphasis on the unity. Yeah. Uh, and even that term person, I looked it up. It was like the Latin was like face or persona mm -hmm. was like face, like three faces of God. Yeah. And this this kind of inspired in my own mind this possible model, which whether it's within the tradition or not, I'm yeah. I'm just wondering. Well, what's the truth, right? Because what is yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> Here we yeah. are in the thought adventure together <laughs> trying to understand yeah. the truth, you know, and I'm thinking yeah. maybe the truth is somewhere, I don't know, maybe, maybe sort of in between the traditions or maybe mm -hmm. it shows up differently in the, in the traditions. And, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean to, to cut you off there. No, but. no, no, no. That's fine. The, the only thing I was going to say, maybe um, for you to think about, not that you might have, you might have already thought of it anyway, but the, how it relates to the biblical portrayal of the the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the, especially in the New Testament, uh, because this is what um, uh, Dale Tuggy, who uh, is a friend of mine, I've had him on my channel. Um, he he likes to divide. If you if you look at his article on uh, Stanford Encyclopedia, he likes to divide the Trinity models between what he calls one self models and three self models. There you go. And yeah. and this this model seems to be more of a one self model yeah. Yeah. right um but the issue that he brings up and which i think is something to consider is how does it relate to the new testament because we see the relationship between the father and the son and at least uh, upon the apparent analysis it seems like we're dealing with two selves the the father uh, the holy spirit is another question because it's not as sort of the main figure, right? But um, at least with the father and the son, it seems to me that we have two selves um, in the New Testament. So I think that is a potential issue um, with that model. And then there are other things which um, actually William Hasker, uh, who, who I love by the way, he's been going back and forth um, with Scott Williams on, on, on this issue and one of the problems is uh, this idea of uh, what is basically called the problem of um, uh, indexicals. It's this idea, well, the father, for example, knows the proposition, I am the father, and the son knows I am the son, and both of them cannot know that in the reverse, otherwise it, it would be uh, just false, right? The, the son can't know the proposition, I am the father. And so, then the question is, how can you genuinely have sort of one self if Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have the, have um, different thoughts or different mental states? And 
uh, I mean, we can do this with, with several things. For example, the, in, at least in classical Trinitarianism, the father generates the son or the, the son is eternally begotten of the father. Well, the father knows I begot the son, right? And that I am unbegotten and the son knows I am begotten. I'm not unbegotten. And so anyway, there's this interesting question of uh, indexicals or these uh, self-referential propositions and how each one of the persons can know them differently. And I think it, it, it does pose a, um, a problem, or at least it's, it's an objection to this sort of more unitive or one self uh, theory. And, and Hasker and Williams have been going back and forth. They've got like three or four papers going yeah. back and forth. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I'm just bringing it up because yeah, it's something sure. to consider. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of it even does come back to vocabulary, right? Because right. even as I'm thinking about it here, I'm just thinking about your own model and sort of how it could be characterized in a way that maybe could lend itself to even a broader appeal, even beyond your, your tradition, mm -hmm. um, even putting aside other interpretive um, questions, which are very important. You point to a lot of very important mm -hmm. issues for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got, 